All right, here for part six of our empty offense stuff, talking about situations. And honestly, this one could have been probably two sessions. It's, uh, it's a lot of stuff, but we're going to get through it and, and talk about why we called certain things in certain situations. So, you know, anytime you're running the offense like we were, where we were fairly simple, try to run a few base plays and, and get a lot of formation. The only time that wasn't ideal was when you got into a situation like third and medium, third and long, third and short, whatever, and you only had these one or two plays. So what a lot of people thought, think of as kind of your extra play, we moved them into, you know, third down and short, third down and medium, third down and longer. We only ran it in the red zone. And we tried to mix stuff up that way. So then we practiced it in that same environment. That's the kind of stuff we're going to talk about and uh, hopefully show you a little bit about what we did situation. I think winning the situations is – as important as anything else that you can talk about in any offense. Um, I think this is an interesting slide and one we probably should, you know, understand. It's not earth shattering. I didn't make this up. Uh, I just kind of put my thoughts down. But when it gets to third down or fourth down or the red zone or goal line or whatever, backed up, always think players, not players. Change the formation, change the tempo, use a shift, you know, practice it realistically. I'm going to go through all those real quick because I think this is almost as important as the plays. If you have a play you love on third and long, run that. I'm just going to show you what I loved on third and long. But make sure you do these things. Always think players not play. High school ball, we're talking about most of the time on this. You're talking about high school football. If I was going to lose, we we're going to lose with the guys they were our best guys. They were going to stop our best guys. If it was third and two, we were going to find some kind of way to get our best guy the ball and try to run it. I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, but that was the general plan. I'm thinking about players, not the play. Uh, third and long, do we want to make them cover, double team our best receiver? Because if they're not, we got the ball. I mean, sometimes it's really that simple. And I want you to think about, especially if you might listen to this, it's been a defensive coordinator or a head coach. Think about all the times when you're on defense. And you know exactly what they're doing, and they get it, you know, because it's really about players, not plays. So for us, we want to initially run our base stuff if we can. So if it gets to third and four, we may run buck sweep. So if I sh I'm going to show you the plays we mostly just ran on third down. But any play I've already shown you, it was open. I mean, any play could be called on third down. But if we really like, say we were running buck sweep and it was just really working, we got to third and two and we want to run buck sweep again, we might change the formation. We might send the guy in motion. We might hard count him. We might do a sugar huddle. All that stuff we talked about in the alignment thing in part one, I loved that stuff on third and fourth down. I loved it in the red zone. I loved it when we were backed up because it just kind of mixed things up. But it's same old stuff for us, and then we get the first. The last thing is practicing it realistically. And what I mean by that is, I'm going to show you the next slide in a minute about how many times we ran these a game. But if, if you like third and long, which long enough to be like eight plus, you're in third and long on the right half, how many times are you going to be there in a game? Once to twice on the right hash. Maybe once to twice on the left hash. So why are we carrying a ton of plays in there? Why don't we have one, two, maybe three plays on each hash and we just practice them on those hats. Maybe we don't even run everything both ways in this. Whereas basically everything else we've talked about, we've been showing you that was base plays, we're running it both ways. Well, now maybe if we're on the left hash, we're going to run this, but if we're on the right hash, we're going to run this. And we don't run them the opposite. You know, because what we want to know is, can we execute this play better than the other? I'm going to tell you something, guys. You're not bullshitting anybody when it's like third and 10 or third and one. You know, you're not. So as far as trying to trick them, the way you trick them is change the formation, change the tempo, uh, and, and make sure your kids know that ball was on this hash. I go line up on these numbers. I run this to this spot. Like you, you practiced it exactly like it was going to be in the game. And I really feel strong about these five. Uh, these first couple slides are probably as important as any of the other stuff's my opinion. This is really not an opinion. Those are the things that are going to that should go through your mind on a key situation. Does it mean you always do them? No, no, no. You could run your base formation, your base play. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you need to make sure if you're worried about it, 
that you've thought of a new formation, thought of a way to send a guy in motion, uh, change the tempo, hard count them, see if you can get them to jump off sides, whatever. So basically, in the, you know, I had 75 games pulled up. It just, you know, seven, probably not quite seven seasons, counting like parts of a scrimmage or playoff game, stuff like that. But it was the number I had that I pulled some of these clips from. And so I just sorted them and came up with this data. Now, this is not successful data. Let me make sure you understand. This is not, this is just data. I mean, you could have gone 0 and 10 or 10 and 0. And within reason, I bet you're going to be in this ballpark. I didn't say this is, has nothing to do with how many yards we got on these plays, how many, whether they were successful or not successful. It's just how many times in 75 games. I want to, I know y'all can read, but I want to explain this. So later, if you pull this up, you understand what it is. How many times in 75 games did we have a play? 40,326 plays total. How many of them were third and four, third or fourth down and three or less? 271, which is 6.3%. My guess is, we don't get in deep into statistics, but my guess is whatever team you're coaching, if you went and figured it out, you're between five and 7%. Uh, how many is that a game? Because for us, it was 57 plays a game. You know, we had some running clocks. We had some games with 80-something plays. You know, but that was the average. That's 3.6 a game. So you take this number, divide it by 75. 3.6 times a game, we found ourselves in third or fourth down and three, one, or two. Now, if you just go by law of averages, that's 1.2 per hash. And that's 36 over a 10-game schedule. So the reason I'm showing you that is when you're coming up with this stuff, and guys, this is this is important. This is probably as important as anything I'll say in this whole class. Do not come up with a million things for a damn high school team. You're gonna suck it all up. You're gonna run one, think about long yardage. You're running 1.7 from each hag a game. Just have a couple of plays for each hash. Maybe have three. And you say, well, they know we're running. If we're no, running a different formation, you change something, you go in motion. Your kids executing it is what matters. Don't come up with a thousand plays that you're going to call on third down. You're going to suck it all up. If I wanted to suck, I wanted to be on first and second. So I'm not saying I didn't come up with something. We'd run power read, but we block it this way. Or I mean, I did some of that. I'm not, I mean, I'm as guilty as anybody of that. But I didn't do it on third day. We do it on first, second down, try to kind of influence somebody, pull the guards the wrong way. I don't know, something. We weren't doing that mess on third day. They were going to beat the stuff we practiced all year. And I'll be honest with this uh, season we got coming up, probably even more important. Be good at you. Worry about you. And so this data should really help you figure out how many plays do we need to, one, carry into the game, but how many plays do we even need to carry into the season with some of this stuff? And we hadn't gotten to our stuff yet, but I just want everybody to really understand, I pulled this stuff, and this is what I got. And some of it's double, so this doesn't add up. Like, it could have been uh, third and four in the red zone, and, of course, that would count on both of those. I thought it was interesting that we had more plays in the red zone than any other category. I, I don't know that I knew that. I might would have said um, – I might would have said it would have been long yardage. You always have more long yardage penalties and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, so I did – we'll have a scouting session toward the end of this, and I'll put up there what percent of our plays worked versus didn't work. This is totally just numbers. This is how many. So, for open field, we ran about 15 plays on each half per game. And you think about it. If you run jet and counter and buck and waggle and – play action and keep pass and screens and you don't get to 13 pretty fast. You, I guarantee you, whoever you are listening to this, you got too much in. Probably I got too much in on this thing. And, and I'm not even coaching right now. But you got to look at this and figure out what your team can do. Um, all right, so let's get into what we're here to talk about, which is our versions of this stuff. Um, short yardage. So we get a short yardage, just one, two, or three to go. 
And there is a difference, guys, between three and one. I mean, I'm not going to BS you on that. There is a difference. But let's group those together for, for sake of argument here. And what are some things you need to do when it's short yardage? I know you guys can read, so I'm going to go through this fairly fast. Get your best guys the ball. We used unbalanced, that'd be our O sets, two tight end sets, uh, anything like that where we could flatten down blocks and things like that. We usually hard counted or went fast. We either get in a sugar huddle, go fast, or we hard count them because either way, we either want to run up there and run it and try to get the first down, or we want to hard count them and, hey, if they jump off sides, they jump off sides. If not, gives you, you know, a second to set the defense because, remember, always think players, not plays, and that counts for their team too. So if they got one really good inside linebacker, run away from him on third down if all things are equal. Um, you got to, on short yardage, be ready to account for extra defenders at the line of scrimmage. If you're blocking down, you got to flatten down, you know. Uh, and, and then I always talk about this. If you're the play caller and you're the head coach like I was, this is a little easier. If you're not the head coach, you got to kind of get a good relationship with your head coach where I wouldn't make that third down call. If it's third and two, I'm not making that call until I know if we're going for it on fourth down. You know, so if you're on the minus 10, well, you're probably not going for it on fourth down. So, you know, let's go. But if it's third and two in the middle of the field, and you know you're going for it, maybe that's your time to take a shot because you know you'll run it on fourth down. You know, it's a way – don't call it like a short yardage play if you know you're going for it on fourth down. The short yardage play is the play that if this doesn't work, we're off the field. That could be third or fourth down. So – our short yardage plan, we're going to run counter, quarterback, but we ran the quarterback a lot, as y'all said. Because we're empty, it gives you that extra receiver, gives you extra blocker. It was good for us. If your quarterback's not the best runner, you give it to the running back. I mean, that's okay, too. But I would run our stuff and run counter and buck and power, stuff that your linemen know how to run, hammer it in there, practice it for this. So practice it like it's third and one. We got linebackers walked up. We're going to get a yard. Don't just practice it like a regular play. This is our quarterback counter. I like quarterback counter because we got some down blocks. We can pull. We get a wrap from the other wing. We just kind of fold in there and get a hole. It hits a lot of different places. Sometimes it bounces. That's not ideal, but sometimes it's all right. And we run quarterback butt some. So I'm going to let some of these run, and you guys feel free to ask me a question if, uh, if there are some. There we go. You might have a question about any of that other stuff, the data or anything before we get started while this thing's loading. I don't know, my computer's a little slow right now. This quarterback butt just hammered it in there. Um, it's in motion one way, and butt sweep the other. Flatten the down block, kick out, wrap. Slide in there, get the first down. Now, that was a touchdown, but the play was like fourth and two. So. This is about third and three. Same thing, we're running counter, just getting in the hole. And we get them, of course, you know, we're going to get them running to the buck and the jet on that play. And we're going to run buck and jet a lot on uh, – that's a sugar huddle where we lined up quick. We're in tight like that. Um, you know, we're, we're going to run a ton of butt sweep or jet sweep on third and short, too. Like I said, don't don't mistake that we wouldn't – we would only do it – you know, we're running this every time. But if that's not working because they're overplaying it, then there's a good little chance usually to slide in there and get some yards. Here's a bounce. And that's not ideal, but you got to just be physical. First down. And sometimes even the, the quarterbacks that aren't great runners are good at this. I'm going to – Think about this when you're thinking of short yardage. Don't think, who's my best running back? Think about who's my best short yardage running back. It might be something different. It might not be, but it might be. Like, this is against Marist, an awesome team in Georgia. And you just, you know, you couldn't do much else against them at times, but we can do this. Um, you know, they wrong-armed us. We just kind of bounced it and hit some yards. And we practice that. So we're practicing this. Like, we expect these guys to walk up. We're ready for that. That's how we practice it. They don't. makes it even easier. Yeah. 
the bounce there too. We'll go on to, is just a ton of the same here. Um, and everybody's got access to this, so I'm gonna go on to the next thing. But I didn't put any buck sweeps or jet sweeps or anything in there because you guys have seen them, but I just put the counters in the quarterback buck, which were different. Now, medium and long yardage is where it gets a little tricky. Because, you know, years ago, guys, and this is important too, when I first was coaching, even when Bo was playing, uh, medium and long yardage, we had a right to punt. That's what the head coach told me when I was off his corner. We had a right to punt. And nobody could take it away from us but us, you know. So third and six, we were on bucks. We, we didn't get it. We just punt it. I'm not saying people don't do that and win now. Maybe they do. But if you've got the ball and a chance to convert and, and win that third down, it's going to matter. So I'll get to this later, but I'm going to tell you now. I did a study on what we called the stats that win. Like, we didn't, we didn't really care much about who had rushing yards and pass yards. Like we kept up with certain – who had the best net punt, who had the best whatever. And it went down to third down percent. So then I charted if we won the topic, did we win or lose the game? And of those ten stats, the stat that was right every game but one, so in about 80 games, 79 times, the team that won the game won third and fourth down. Now, that was just our team. I'm not saying that's true for you. But that, so if you get to third and six and you get to first down, that is massive. And if you don't, it could be massive. So I don't believe in giving up anymore is what I mean. We're going to practice third and six. If we think we run buck sweep, we will, because remember, if I'm going to go for it on fourth down, I may call buck sweep on third and six. We get four, and then it's fourth and two, and we're going to do our short yard stuff. But I'm going to play to try to get the first down. And I know if you're watching this thing called empty, you are. Um, get the best guys the ball, same thing. I like bunch sets or something you don't normally do. For us, y'all seen us in a lot of bunch sets in some of the uh, clips I've shown, and some of that stuff's been on third down, some of it's been in the red zone. But I generally, not every time, but I generally, like the bunch in the red zone and on medium yardage or long yardage. Because I just thought when you sprung it on people, they kind of struggle with it the first couple times and get a first down and then kind of go back to some of the normal stuff. Oh, I always was either running something quick that I like or we were hard count. Freeze and Cruz, both hard counts. Cruz just had the motion. You know, we're going to make them line up. I mean, I could tell you numerous times somebody jumped off sides and gave us the first down. Or if it was third and six and went third and one. Uh, and if they don't, then so what? Just gave us more time to call. It's important to understand the coverage. I believe on scouting, we over-scout sometimes the other team. We need to know who's good on the other team, and we need to know if they do anything different on third down. Like, is there, is there like one blitz they like or something like that? That's about all we really need to know. The rest of it, we got to be ready for whatever. Um, and then, like I said before, you need to know if you're planning on going for it on third or fourth down. So let's just say, and I took this for example, because we've got three or four plays we like, mesh, gat, space, and cross are the plays we like in medium yardage. And let's just say, for example, I put all these in the same formation so you can understand. So we went green crews. We were in bunch. We had the wing here. He ran in motion and hard counted. Then he went all the way out here. So either they jump and we go on and get the first down or get close to it, or they didn't jump and we end up in this bunch with a guy out here off the line and X here. We can go mesh. We can go scat, we can go space. For example, this is a better play on the left hash. This is a better play on the right hash. This is a better play in the middle. Did we run the opposite? No. Can you run the opposite? Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. I just was going to, I'd rather practice. If we only had 10 plays to run space, I wanted to do it with the slant on the left and the spacing routes on the right 10 times. And if you say, well, they know it's coming. Well, they don't really because we might run something different. They know that's one of the things that's coming. And I'm telling you, defense coordinators, they're not living in the world where you couldn't run it the other way. Because we ran everything else here. But some of these plays, we really did. Um, cross was just Y cross. Same thing we could do it out of any formation. You got to green, just go five out, under Sam over Mike. We ran the backside dig and arrow. Uh, Really good to get the backs out of the backfield if they were bunching in, just kind of get a cheap one. So I really like to go in the out read, and if they overplay that, cross usually there. Um, 
got to pass pro a little bit on these, but these are fairly quick throws. So you don't have to be great at pass pro. And, um, you know, that's important. Because anytime pass pro is hard, some issues. All right, we got a pretty good bit of film here. So let it run. This is cross. I think most of these are cross. So we got to go out, we hit the cross, then we hit the dig. I tried to put these in order, but that was the last progression. We went go, out, cross, dig. So the quarterback looked here. We always run this hash. We ran this all week, this hash. We come back, cleared the dig, first down. Um, now we got them in the backfield. This is Bunch. We got the back in the backfield, so it'd be green, L. They were bringing this guy, and we brought the guy in the backfield, so we brought him back, sent him out, put it on him. Same thing here, cross. This guy's coming, so he's open. That's pre snap. Going uh, uh, out to the field, pre snap, stealing. And we worked it from that hash. That's what I was talking about, realistic guys. We were on this hash all week. We worked this play this one way. We were throwing that, or we were going to hit that cross if it was covered. Same thing here go out, cross. There it is, first down. Go out, get the out there. That's the throw, you know. They're giving you the leverage, it's that going out. But you can see if it wasn't there, that cross was going to be open. But the quarterback's progression is the outside go, out. So same here. Go, out. You say, why are they playing y'all like this? Well, I mean, you got to keep in mind, we're running the dang little bit of everything So out of these formations. So they didn't know we were about to run this play. <laughs> but if they don't play in here, we've got enough stuff in here with the bunch and all that. This guy's in a real bind. If he's way out there, we could just run sweet and get the first down that way. And so they're just so worried about that kind of stuff or verticals. And so that's why this guy's so deep because he's playing verticals. You know, and so I think if you've been in all of these and you're now to the sixth part of this, hopefully some of that's making sense when you're watching these films of the other team. These guys are stopping verticals. They're like, you know what? You want to throw this five out? Go ahead. We're not giving you the touchdown. And they did. They did a good job with that. But we were able to get the first down there. I mean, that was third and about six or seven. There's a cross. We hit the crosser. Um, there we go. We're getting the cross. Do it behind him a little bit. This time we bring motion. So just doing a little different. He still, we got the out. The cross, we hit the cross. Just sent that guy motion to run the arrow like you normally would do anyway. Kind of mix it up. We had practiced it all week on that hash, whatever. Same thing here, go, out, we hit the swing. The check downs on this, these plays, most of them, are the back. So this guy's running the arrow, you get pressure, put it on him. The quick throws are out to the backs, right and left. The five out or the arrow. This is not earth shattering, boys. I know. Just why cross. I hope they don't sue me from the air raid people for this. Uh, but everybody runs this. But we caught it in these situations and tried to put it on that correct hash where we got that first down. You know, like it, that was when we wanted to run this. All right, so here we're into something different. So this is mesh pride. We're in green crew. So it's kind of what I showed you on the film. We're bunched up. We hard counted. They didn't jump. So now we're going to run um, mesh. We're going to run him on a post. We got a wheel. 
and then two meshers under and one over. We clear, takes a minute, but we do clear, get the first down. Mesh is a really hard play to run. I know that's another thing I might get fired for, but it's a hard play to run, so I would only run it in certain scenarios. Um, I didn't even really like this on the hash. I mean, we should have been in the middle of the field on this probably uh, because the X had to come too far across. But it's a nice play. You see how the, the uh, our one of our guys here curls up, finds the voided area he's running. I mean, we're going to find somebody open if we can protect it long enough. But if you can't protect it, you got to call screen. We'll get to that in a minute. Same thing here, hard count. All right, now they don't really know what to do because they've been playing bunch here. So now the corner goes out. So he's coming down. We just got a good matchup there. We just own a touchdown. That's just good ball right there. I mean, but we always ran it like that. Uh, it was one of our fastest guys. We we're going to send him out there on the post. And if it was open, let's take a shot. Um, if not, we're going to run a wheel behind him for the post wheel look. And we had the measures. I believe this is a scat. So on scat, we're going to have a corner, a sit, and a swing. The backside runs a five out for us. Now, we kind of made that up. Some people run this scat a little different. But I let him run a, a five out to the sticks. He runs to the sticks, first down. And it's not a – I said five out. I think it would be a six out or a four and a half out. I don't care. But if he gets it, he better get the damn first down. And so if we had no flat player out there in a backed off corner, we were just going to throw the five out into the boundary and, and make that happen. Make them stop that, and then we're throwing the scat to the field. So we got the scat coming up there. You see they kind of doubled it. We hit the scat, doubled it out. Um, same thing here. They got two out here, so this isn't ideal, but then he comes. But – Get the scat for the first down. See, that was third and five. Good. Nice job by that scat runner working back away from the defender. Got motion here. This time we're hitting the scat to the field. He kind of clears. It takes him a minute, but he clears, and he goes and scores. Um, same thing here, I believe. We hard count. If you notice, there's a ton of hard counts on this. why these clips are a little longer. Because, you know, we were going to hard count. What did it hurt? Gave us a chance to think about what we wanted to call. You know, if they jump, they jump. They don't, they don't. Here we hit the back, kind of check. Like, we went through everything. Not sure. Always get the ball to the back on these plays. Same way there, we're throwing the scat. We threw the five out, but it was like seven. So I put that one on there because it's like seven out. Here we got straight man. We get straight man. The corner's good. Kind of bang there. Throw the corner. Here we got space. So this is basically the same play. No, it's shallow. I'm sorry. I put a couple of these in in case anybody wanted to see them. Have it on the descriptions. But we're running a um, like a Z shallow here. We got to go. And we're flooding this way like mesh and just getting levels. Um, they don't have a flat player over there. That's a decent little play to get some runs, too. Same here in motion. Shallow. So as you can see, I like the air raid. I like Tony Franklin. I just like it on third down. I'm practice it exactly the way I wanted to do it and try to make that play because it's such a good play. It's everybody wanted to run it for so many years. Um, we got it that way. You got a question, Bo? I see something over there. Yeah, there. Um, on mesh, what, what's the quarterback progression on mesh? Post, wheel, mesh. 
Are you looking deep? Wheel, that lets the mesh clear. And you can go mesh, mesh, mesh if you want to. You know, place side mesh, middle mesh, back side mesh. Uh, but usually it's that place side mesh that clears open. This is a pretty good play I put on here for this reason. This is shallow too, where we ran that shallow, but we get somebody jumping with them. No, never mind. I won't play. This one. That was the play before. This play. Watch us get here and get in grass and settle. See how he stops? That's really good. Um, all we're trying to do on these third and sevens or something, guys, just get a damn first down. There's no other goal. Just get a first down. Put the kids in positions where they can get a first down. You know, whatever they run. I hope that answered uh, Chris's question. Um, I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't want to gloss over it. I just, this is space where we got the slant now instead of the out like scat, but they're kind of running the same kind of scat concept where they're spreading out over the ball spacing route. It's a West Coast play. Um, hard to defend all that on third and six, something like that. Got the slant coming to the field, and then the guy's spreading out into the boundary for some pretty easy throws. See it there? I mean, that's a simple throw. That is a short, short throw. Um, I let them clear. They're a little too close together there, probably. Same way here, you see them kind of settling. Because of such a short throw, you know, they can be fairly close together. Um, you know, there's a, there's a point of no return, but you know, you got to make them pick one, throw to the other one. But if they give you this look, like here, and there's grass up top, you throw the slant. You know, that's the first look. So the progression on that would be throw the premium route, which for scat would be an out, and for space would be a slant. And then scroll across the field. So it'd be look for that premium route, and then look across the field, facing routes in that order. Same here on the goal line, we're in bunch. We're on a slant here, trying to score a touchdown. We didn't feel real comfortable calling that. So we come back, and the guy's sitting over the ball, touchdown. We're going to get a sit by him, a mini curl by him, and an arrow on these routes. They're on a corner when they're to the field. So it's gap, but in space, they run it like that. Same thing here. You got to sit. You can kind of see this is the same kind of play. We've just inverted from scat, where instead of the outside guy running the sit, inside, you kind of see it here. We got it. They run with the, that's just wide stick. If you understand, uh, the old spread stuff. Same thing, third long or third and medium. That's the deal. Same thing up here. So we're going to put this guy in a bind. He's going to cover one of them. The other one's got to be open. They put two out there. Backside should be good. Like here, they kind of are tighter. So we throw the backside. Same thing there. We sit. So all these kind of spacing routes, because cross and mesh and all them are spacing routes too. This was our our medium yard pack. You say, Coach, did y'all call this every – no, 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 no. Some third and fives, we call butt sweep. Sometimes we call verticals. Sometimes we call a fast screen. I don't want to sound like we did – this was just – we we very rarely, if ever, called these plays on like first and ten, though, these ones I'm showing. We called these when we had to have – we didn't want it to work. We almost didn't want it to work on first down because it was probably only going to work one time. We needed it to be on third down. We kind of put that guy in a bind, and his coach told him, hey, next time they do this, do this. Well, there wasn't going to be a damn next. You know, we just needed that first down. Next time they're going to have to defend verticals and screen. So now we're going motion, run the stick that way, hit the guy in motion, get the first down that way. All right. Long yardage, I think this is important to understand in long yardage. Are you are are you going for it or playing it safe? Because long yardage for us would be basically eight plus. And there's a big difference between eight and 14. There's a big difference when you're down two touchdowns or when you're up two touchdowns. There just is. So I, I don't really – um. you need to, I think, identify that first. You, know, you need to think to myself, are we really going for this? 
Are we thinking we need the first down here bad and we say to hell with it, we're going to try to get the first down even if it gets a sack? Or do we think they're more of a blitz team and this is when they're going to try to tee off on us and let's just throw the screen or something like that and see if we can get it the old-fashioned way and go from there. So I think that is really the key when you get an eight-plus yard. Do we want to throw the ball over the sticks where if we complete it, it's a first down? But that involves pass throwing. It involves some being better at some stuff. Or do we want to go screen, uh, go quick game, something that gets the ball out, and then we got to execute it to get past the chains? So think about that when you're making these long yardage calls. That's probably the one thing to think of. I used to have a set on the call sheet where it said, go for it, play it safe. You know, like I have one call for each or two calls for each on each hash. So I was kind of red, depending on how the game was going. Um, this was our best play on, I mean, this is some damn backyard football, but everybody just went to the sticks and turned around, spread out, like ran vertical concepts. So we're running Vermont, basically. But coming back, you had to get the first down. Probably our best play, because everybody's worried about vertical. Say, well, what about, did on third down they just play this way? And No, 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 because we still ran verticals on third down, too. But if we thought we had them, because they were playing over the top, this was playing A on third and eight, third and nine, third and 10, something like that. Plan B was gonna be this one because this is a great play to get somebody open, but it takes a little bit longer. Just run the curl flat or curl wheel. We turn those flats into wheels, ran the middle guy down the middle of the field. Because it's 5-0 protection, I mean, we got no backs in there. You need to probably be right on the pass for like, if they bring six, you got to throw quick. And that kind of defeats the purpose. So if you feel like they're, are we, are they going to bring six type team, which we see, you know, we probably didn't even see half the time, to be honest. We saw it maybe three to four games out of every 10 or something like that. Because a lot of times people were just trying to get us off the field. They were just, they thought they'd bring you know, if they brought hot, like if they bring this Mike Backer here, we may just need to throw it right here to this guy and see him come and just throw it and maybe catch it and split some. And, you know, so we just didn't get a ton of that. People are going to kind of rally and, and, and try to tackle. But if they brought six, this wouldn't have been a great play. you got to throw hot. And throwing hot, you're probably rolling the dice on if it's going to work or not, or if you're going to get the first down or not. If you wanted to be conservative, we'd throw screens. Now, if we're in this empty set, we ran it both ways. We ran the slow screen out of backfield, old school, step up, release. We ran it out of here. We ran like a bubble and came back, and we just basically dropped. If they were bringing heat, we we're going to throw it. We we're going to punch, get these guys out in front, and just try to Get the first down that way. And honestly, I, I don't – I'll have to look at when we get to the self-scout and stuff, what was better and what, but probably honestly about the same. Probably uh, 65, 70% efficient going forward or not – going forward or not going forward, I guess. Because uh, this play, when executed well, gets you a lot of first downs too. Uh, you just got to earn them. You don't catch them. It's not a, – a completion does not equal a first down. Whereas on the last two plays, a completion – equal to first down. Apologize, oh, yeah, my computer's a little slow today. Something. YouTube is. All right, so we hard count. They don't jump. He goes on. And we got quads. This is all going to be chains, meaning the play where we run to the stick, turn around. The sticks in this case were the goal line, basically. So run the goal line, turn around, throw it. Y'all see that? It's kind of fuzzy on me. You see it, Bo? Uh, it's, it's a little fuzzy, a little slow. It's clear normally. The connect. Yeah, so something's wrong with the connection. Is it the film is clear? I've seen it. Uh, so if you go on the website, no, it'll be there. All right. So here, same thing. This is a good look of what we're trying to get in this. So it's, you know, I don't know if you can see up there, but it's third and two about there. So about ten, nine. We've gotten in quads. Hard counted them probably. I'll cut that part out. These guys have rolled over. This guy's coming. He's playing deep. If he's coming and he's the only guy coming, we can pick that up. Quarterback knows that. So we're, I mean, 
unless something weird happens and this guy turned the bales, this is basically a stealing first down. Like this is like, I mean, you notice how quick that ball's coming out. They can, they can, they can bring it all they want on this. It's that Coleman play at curl flat that's a problem. This is not a problem if they bring heat if you know where to go. This boy was a dang good football player. Wasn't that? We just could pick it up. See how quick the ball's coming out. Now, what if they jump him? Well, you got to throw a fade or something. I mean, they obviously didn't know this was coming. Here's a good – I put this play on here for a reason. I remember this now. We hard counted. I saw how the defense was playing. Playing this guy to come, but nobody else. So, we could pick that up. And look at his fourth – I don't know if y'all can tell it's fourth down, but it's fourth down and about 16. There's the chain. We don't have a good fourth and 16 call, guys. But the way they were doing was kind of baiting us, like this guy was coming up and then turning and running, almost like baiting us to call a fade. And um, so we ran it like this, and we ran the comeback. But he had to go to 16 yards. That's why the kids got to understand. See his route? I mean, that route could be a nine-yard route. It could be a 16-yard route. I mean, they've got to understand, we got to get the first down. That was fourth down. That wasn't even third down. I mean, it's, that's it. If he runs that route short, it's okay. So, you got – again, how are you going to practice this with the eight million other things you got to practice? So, for us, it was going to be we were going to practice this one play or these three plays, really, over and over and over again so we could get – now, that's heat right there. So, we threw the screen. We kind of got lucky on this one, but this was a team that always blitzed. So, they bring some heat. We throw the screen. Beautiful. Nice when things work out. Here, this is curl flat. I don't know why these aren't in order. I thought we had them in order. Um, this is curl flat, but they got nobody for here. So he, it's kind of like we talked about on verticals last time. He can shorten his drop if he's wide open. So this guy's running the mid go. We got a curl by the outside guys, wheels by the inside guys. And uh, I like the curls to push vertical, stem to the post, and settle. If you saw that drawing, and but if this guy's open in the middle of the field, you put it on him. It doesn't always happen that quickly. Sometimes he has to clear and split the safeties. That time there was just nobody out there. So all right, same thing here. I think there's curl. We hit the wheel. Probably should have hit the curl, honestly. That was a bad read by the quarterback, but this stuff worked out. Um, but we look to the middle go. This guy's deep. That curl's the throw. I mean, he was down low enough, but we could have hit that. If we knew we could pass pro, I love this play. And I don't mean, let me make this clear. There's no place for somebody getting their ass I mean, if we knew they were bringing four or five people. There's throwing the middle go on it, same way with the curl in that middle go. So he's going to run the wheel out of the backfield here. We got an inside go. See, and it's just open, so we put it on him immediately. That's like vertical. So that's just like vertical. Okay, I put this one on because this was a screen. This was a screen to the back. We had the back in the backfield. We called screen, but how we ran our screens was the quarterback could catch and throw to any of these verticals. Everybody's running verticals, and we could throw to them. And so you see right here, there's literally no one in the middle of the field. They just misaligned. And so watch the back here. So they're running screen. I don't know if you can tell that, but they line were about to release for a screen, and we converted that anyway. So you might see it better here. But these guys pass set, and they're about to go, but he just throws it anyway. And that's something I, we tried to build as many little things into that because we're practicing the same crap every week. This is curl flat. All right, we'll hit some of the curls. Now, that's a beautiful-looking play right there. We're just hitting a curl. And that curl is really hard to defend uh, if run correctly. Problem is getting sacked, because you see it takes a minute. But other than that, it's going to be hard to defend. Here's I apologize that these aren't in order. I thought they were. I must have missed this. Note. See, we got a screen here. Usually it's all screens, all curl. curl. Um, let's 
the curl on the curl. Um, now we're in quads, but they run the same route. This outside guy, Duke, he said, that's number two, run the curl. We hit the three go. He said, he's running the go, wheel, curl, and this guy's a decoy out of quad. So it kind of changes who runs the curl, which gave us a little better look on the curl most of the time. But that first look is the middle go. You always look go and then curl off of that, wherever they took that away from. So if, let's show you this, if right here, which that's about progressions, if right here he's looking at this middle go, if this guy took it away by flying over there, I mean, for whatever reason, he's in the quarterback vision, then this would be the curl side of the program. You can't see the other safety, but he's over there. If he had taken it away, taken the middle go away, so he pulled to the middle of the field, he can't help with the curl, and that, that would have been the better. I hope that makes sense for them. But in that case, they split them. The safeties went like this. Three went right down the middle of the field split. This is chains. This is where everybody's just, if you notice, everybody's right there at the stick. Everybody's going to the sticks. We just got in a bunch and spread out. That way. So we're running like Vermont out of that and just bunching up. And they just find grass, keep working. That's how we practice. Back to quads here. I think this is curl. He's going to be a decoy. We got the curl coming from now really the number two receiver. And look how clear he comes. Wide open. Beautiful. Like, again, I, I try to be real with you guys and not sell you a bunch of garbage. The play takes a minute to develop like you're seeing. But if you can pass pro, it's hard to defend. See the same thing there, that curl. I think this is a screen with a screen out here. And we don't get a blitz. We kind of thought we were going to, they rushed three. That's why I put it on it, but we still got out there because they dropped, you know, got the first down. And it was third about 14 or something. Must have had a penalty or something. And see, just kind of clear. Sometimes them linemen don't have to block anybody. They just got to go out there and just keep running. The main thing for the linemen is don't get in the damn way. Just keep running. Find work. Drop your butt a little bit. Try to punch. But same thing here on the curl. That's a great throw. Now, that's a good throw. I mean, I'm not going to say that was scheme there. We get, and we're splitting the safeties here, so we get down the middle of the field. This safety's staying there, so we got the grass, and that's just a good throw. Um, some of these throws anybody can make, but that ain't one of them. Same thing here with the chains. Everybody's running to the stick. No, screen. I'm sorry. The screen right here. Everybody's running goes. We could throw it, but we check down to the screen. All right. This is curl flat. Get the curl right there. First down. And we got in quads, same thing. So now they were covering number one on the curl better, but ran the curl by number two. He had to clear a little bit. So kind of put a few of these on here that were sloppy on purpose. So kind of see that the main thing about this play is they just kind of find work. Remember, what's the goal of every third down play? To get, you know, get the first down.
All right, we hard count. I think this is Curl also. Find him work, cleared him. That was a good job. They were actually playing that pretty well, and he got him cleared late. This is a screen. Just did it out of a different formation. We'd run that little scat play out of this look where we sent it back out of backfield. So we just ran the screen off of that. We can run a screen off of anything. Same thing here, the screen. But we threw it. So see, if you look out here, watch him. He's running the screen, but nobody's over the top of this guy, so we just throw it. It crawls. Nice play. And that was the quarterback. That was, I mean, look, you get most credit for that. We just gave them that option. And if they knew they could complete it, throw it. But they had to come look at me if they didn't. It was always easier to check down to the screen, but. Get that ball out quick. They're not going to call a uh, lineman downfield on that. It doesn't kind of see the screen here. It's fuzzy, I know, but that's kind of what it should look like. First down. That was like third and about 20. Here we got it out of quads. We're coming back here. The key is just get that guy blocked. All coaching right there. Um. Same thing here. Oh, guys, for some of this quality. Some of this I'm going fast through, so, but this, the, the video does not look fuzzy on the website, so you should be able to see it. Um, there we're hitting the middle go. You get the idea. You might have a question about any of that before we get into the red zone. All right, I'm not going to show a ton of the red zone video, but I did include it so everybody can watch. Most every play of the red zone. Basically, in the red zone, I thought of it like medium yardage. So we were probably still going to be a bunch. We're still going to run our regular stuff first. But if we wanted to do something unique out of red zone, it would be the cross, mesh, scat, stick, stuff like that that I thought was good in the red zone. All that stuff's good in the red zone. And then, always in the red zone, we were going to practice verticals phase. Like, to me, best play in the red zone outside of your, is run your regular play or throw the ball in the end zone one-on-one -on -one and be your good kid. Find a way to get a good kid the ball. Because if he catches it, it's a touchdown. You don't have to do four plays, five plays, eight plays, whatever. Uh, we And, and we, that wasn't just like, oh, let's go out there and do it. I mean, we're putting the ball in every hash. We're working phase nonstop. Kids are tired of it. I mean, we're going to work the mess out of them because we want to be good in the red zone. I didn't love throwing fades out of the red zone. I mean, you watch film enough, you'll see a few of them. But I didn't love just calling the fade to the outside guy, like just the vertical, throw it up no matter what to him, unless we were in the red zone. And the reason for that is if – think about how many times in a game or in your career, if you've been coaching a while, you're on the minus 20. Forget about it, it's your team or the other team. Ball's on the minus 20. They throw a fade. They complete it to midfield, to the 50. So they got 30 yards. Now they're at the 50. This drive still stalls out and they don't score. Now, they wasted that completed fade. They had a great formation. They had a good matchup, whatever it was. I don't like wasting those plays. Now, what did we talk about on Vermont verticals? If something wasn't open, we were going to check down by throwing it as far as we could. That, to me, wasn't a wasted play. I'm talking about the ones where we're like, we think in this formation we can get our guy and their guy and blah, blah, blah. Don't waste that play unless it's going to be a touchdown. So we were going to get inside the 25 or so before we were like, all right, here we go. The other thing about it is you're going to get a lot of man coverage in there, so even easier to get somebody isolated. But know if you went on the fade. That's what we needed to know from the other team's corner and our guys and stuff like that. And you might be surprised that some of the people that went on fades aren't necessarily the Division One receivers. If you practice it enough and understand leverage of how to run that, it's really not that bad. You know, you can be a decent receiver and run down the numbers, let the ball fade you down the numbers. So this is just some motion. Some of the stuff we did in the red zone was ran stuff, different plays in motion. Uh, let me try to skip some of this. Let me. All 
All right. That's it. No, this has to be your fault with this internet. It can't be mine. But this will be the fade. Like, we thought we had that matchup. We hard counted them, I think, here. Um, yeah, we're hard counting. We brought this guy over, so it's like a cruise set. We got a one-on-one. -on -one. We're like, hell yes, put it on. But if we'd have done that on the minus 20 and he catches it there, we got the ball to 50. You know, that's got to be a touchdown. We probably weren't going to get that look but once. And I'm not saying we never did it. I mean, we call a fade in the minus 22. I just didn't look. I tried to hold that stuff till I knew it would be a touchdown. I'm trying to tell you guys some of the little stuff that I really thought helped us along the way. Um, that's a T set. I tried to show you a few different things. You watch this stuff closely, you'll see most of these plays have something weird about them. Or if they're a base plays, it's just butt sweep. But notice there's no tackle. So we got trips over here. Guard center, guard tackle, tight end, the trips over here, and a receiver. So it's just a man. That's just the, the right tackle playing tight end. So you get an extra guy on the buck, just kind of popped in there, and then line up right and got the touchdown. So, but that that was the mantra of the red zone was can we do something different? See, here we're in bunching at a boundary. They got it one on one. We're throwing the fade. We worked that play a thousand times but we needed it to win right there. We worked it on the wide field like this. We worked it in the boundary. We worked it on the middle, wherever. Same thing here. This is not the same play, same thing. We had a good matchup here. Um, And say, well, why didn't people double them? Well, some did, but we just ran book sweep or we ran power read or something. I mean, you know, these are the plays that were unique to the red zone. It was hard to double team those outside receivers and play the edge on the buck and jet and stuff. Not impossible, but it's hard. It's just emotion. We've seen that play, I think, already. So y'all get the idea. Everything down there was either something unique that ran a base play. So we run one of our regular plays out of something weird, or we're, uh, we're throwing the ball in the end zone. On the goal line, same as short yardage in a lot of cases. Kind of like medium yardage is a lot like the red zone, you know, from your mindset. The only difference is you need to talk to the O-lineman about closing the O-line splits a little bit when we foot to foot or one foot flips. Uh, account for extra defenders, account for both A and B gap being slanted. When they're not, it's just stealing. But practice it that way, uh, get into heavy sets, you know, stuff like that. But we were going to run our quarterback again because that was our guy. And if we didn't have a great quarterback to run, we might have put one of our running backs at quarterback in some of these formations. Again, you're not BSing him on the one-yard line is what you're doing. So we're going to get in this set with a bunch. We hard counted. They didn't jump. But we did this on purpose. We want to get him out here so we can run this quarterback buck right here with this extra bunch. They had to go out and cover. We just try to slide in there and run the quarterback buck. Even though that was regular personnel with no tight end, we had a lot of blockers. This is counter. Same thing, quarterback buck, but we just flattened it down by say, how y'all pulling on the red? Well, if they're like foot to foot splits, and everybody's really flat on their down blocks. It ain't that big of a deal to be pulling. And we practiced it against those looks. No. Same thing here. You got tight splits, flat down, quarterback. We could have ran jet that way or buck and then quarterback buck. Really. Same thing. I'm trying to move through this because I'm taking everybody's time. But um, it's just ISO. We grind down there, like inside zone, but we were loading up. Same thing here with quarterback counter. That was our main play. Just find that quarterback where we just blocked down, kicked out, and found the hole. You can kind of see it here. The kid just had to be. We ran this kick with short yards. He just found the hole. Run over people getting rid of the end zone. Um, 
we got reactions, meaning we threw a lot of screens, we threw a lot of hitches, we threw a lot of pops. These were the plays we ran off of. I'm not going to show a lot of these, but I just wanted you to have the access to them. I'll show a, I might to show one or two of them. But, um, so for us, a fox was pump and go. I didn't make that word up. So if somebody was stopping the fast screen by cheating, remember we talked about they got to stop your base play by cheating. We've got numbers on the fast screen. We throw it out there. So here, we've got numbers on the fast screen. This is in the reading temperature game. We've got numbers out here on the screen, like this guy's enough in the box and empty that you really ought to be able to throw this out here. But the problem is this guy's baiting us. He's a pretty good athlete, so he's not going to let us do it. So we had just blocked the field goal. Great time to do something. We knew this play would be good. We didn't know if it would be a touchdown or not. But we jumped, you know, we over-exaggerated pump screen, threw it, gone. I didn't believe in calling a ton of these. We wanted them to worry about the screen. You see quarterback's footwork there. We just pump, reset, throw. Turn into a fade if they cover it, to be honest. I mean, pump, reset, though. You got the vertical, so you can kind of hit all of them. We usually hit the outside guy, but you could hit the inside guy, I guess. Pump, reset, throw. And then they're just spreading out like vertical rules, you know, after they got us pumping the screen. Same here, we get a pump screen, and these guys spread out. Hit the inside guy here. That's why I put that one. All right, so you get the idea. I'm gonna skip that, but there's some hitching goes and some sluggos in there too. I like these specials. Anybody watch this play? You know, we're gonna run some trick plays on you. Um, I think you gotta have some trick plays. One that come off your base play because they're good, and two, the kids like them and they're fun. And so, put some tricks on here. Everybody's got access to the film. Everybody can message me if. Uh, for some reason, we got a question they don't understand. Watching the film, uh, we ran a ton of double pass, ton of halfback pass, uh, and, and in reverse. And this is one of my favorite reverses. You know, if you followed this film, you've seen a lot of the uh, Z around on buck sweep. So we'll send this guy around on buck sweep. So if nobody's paying attention to him, we just start doing it like that. And we can look at these guys blocking. That's beautiful. Take on two blocks there. We had a crack. Yeah, I mean, that's. It was like 15 yards, but that's a great looking play. We hard counted, we knew this guy would be in tight, or we didn't want to call the play unless he was, so we hard counted him. We're action this way, so everybody's going this way. We bring the other wing around, left him alone. That was great. We couldn't block that too bad. Um, this is halfback pass, so we ran the jet sweep, go back to the quarterback. Same play here. Jet sweep, keep him in the block. We got route there, throw back to the quarterback. I didn't always tell him to throw back to the quarterback. He had a premium. He looked to the uh, corner. It was like a smash concept. This guy would block. The other two run smash. And then if that wasn't there, he could throw back. It just coincidence those first two were back to the quarterback. There's probably another one here. Um, this is double pass. It's in motion, but we're going to throw the backwards pass here. Uh, stealing. Probably ran this because I'm probably not coaching anymore and I work at central office, I can say this. Probably uh, ran this play about 25 times in eight years. Dickens are probably in 30 times or 35 and 12 years a head coach and uh, most of them work a lot of yards. That's the one where we hand it off and um, Run the corner. But it just looks like jet. And then we just run them routes. Liked it out a bunch because you kind of get lost. This is double pass. So they're playing aggressive on the screen. I'm going to block there, throw it backwards, throw it there. You get that. Now, if the safety plays deep and has some discipline, it ain't that hard to cover one receiver out. But they rarely do. And if they do, you can usually get them on the screen. And we practice this play another one a thousand times. So we say, I don't know if we got two kids that can throw that. We always did for 12 straight years. So even this time, watch this, I'm going to give it away. You know, it's great when you got the kid putting his gloves on that plays on defense, 
while he's running, watch this, great. Nobody could have known this was going to be something. Uh, but same thing, he ran right past him. I'll tell you a little tidbit for that play. Many trick plays. I always told the official we were about to I had to whisper that thing a few times, but I always told the official we're about because if you don't do and it's close, they're not going to call it a backward pass. But if you don't tell them, they love to look like they're important. They don't call that flag. It'd be a touchdown. He's playing a game, and you watch the film, and it's not even a backward pass or something. But too bad. Now we're in a tight end set, so now the tight end's going to run in the corner. He's blocking, throw it back. I mean, we found as many plays as possible to run this play. What it did is just keep people deep. I mean, we called it, like I said, 25 times in 12 years, so twice a year. I mean, it wasn't like we called it every play, but hell, half of them are on this film because they work. Um, but we did it just enough. Every third or fourth game, we're going to do this enough. When you forgot about it, we hit you. And then two or three games in a row, they just played over the top of every screen, terrified a double pass. They can't tell the difference on that field of these kids backing up versus running the real screen. They really, I mean, maybe somebody says they can and they're better than me, I don't know. But I ain't never heard of it. This is a reverse, I think a reverse pass. Just try to throw a few things at y'all in case anybody could use any of this. This is double pass, we're blocking with these guys, releasing there. Same thing here. We got motion, I think. Motion's a great way to do it because they're really not going to count for him in motion coming up. You can see it here. I could have thrown that one. Here's another reverse. We get around, overplaying. We're back leading. Good job. All right, late in the game, I don't have much time left. Late in the game, this is here. You got to have a plan for two-minute offense. What's your plan? What are you going to do? For us, it was going to be a lot of that long and medium yard stuff and some verticals and stuff like that. We're going to stay in the force. I mean, so think of these rules. Everybody should read through this stuff. So I'm not saying I'm right on all this, but I'm saying I wrote all this. I did write all this from scratch. I didn't steal it. And I didn't – some of it changed yearly, and I learned the hard way. So, like, rules for two-minute offense. Don't change personnel unless the clock stuff. Unless, you know, unless you have to. Try not to flip the strength if you don't have to. So, you know, like, if we're on the right hash and we're running a play with the big field to the left, and that's where we're going to put our strength. And the next play we run left, and now we're still – we might run bunch. Because now we still want to stay strong left if we can. That's just a way to run the play faster. Now, if we get out of bounds or get a first down, that's different. If the clock's running, something to think about. Um, understand the scenarios of – Transition in from hurrying up to slowing down. So you, you need a field goal and you're down to the five and you just want to run it down so the other team has less time as possible, you know. Uh, position the ball for a field goal, fire long, no timeout, run the team, all that stuff. Didn't have a play for the last play of the game. You know, we're behind, we're losing. Ball's on the eight yard line. What are we going to do? You know, when we run past, we use those stuff. Ball's on the 21. What are we going to do? One play left. Ball's on the 40. What are we going to do? Ball's on the minus 40. Those are all different scenarios. You got one play. They don't come up that often in high school. Ball. We rarely, I don't have a lot of film on this. Because we didn't do, I have two minute offense film. I don't have a ton of last play game film. But you got to have it ready. And college in the NFL, it's huge. A lot of our games don't come down to the last absolute play, but when they do, you need to be ready. Um, four minute offense and things to keep in mind there. Four minute offense for those, I mean, I hope everybody understands what I mean by that, but we're ahead and we got the ball. We're ahead and we got the ball. What are we going to do? Stay in bounds. Overprotect the football. Iron tight. If you're injured, get your butt off the field. Don't stop the clock. You know, things like that. Talk to them. Be hard count. I don't believe in taking forever. If somebody's standing there with a stopwatch holding their hand up, I don't, I don't like that. I like to just hard count and run it like we normally do. Because if you hard counted, then kind of were slow at the play. And I kept the watch. We had people with a watch. I just didn't like the kids knowing that. I wanted them to just play ball. 
And then I got down here, how to line up to victory, or how we did it, when you could go victory, and uh, how to do that. Anybody have any questions about that? I know I went a little long. I apologize. It was a lot of stuff. No questions? All right.